Well, I had just gotten back from a, from a trip back east and I was pretty exhausted. I was heading into a, a meeting and I thought, I, I need to rest. And I, and I sat down and I just laid down on this bench and I had the strangest sensation come over me. I, I would have this buildup of energy that would start at my feet and then it would just boom, explode all through my body, this energy just racing, and it just felt like I was in a completely different world. Went in for an MRI, and then I got a call from the doctor, and uh, he said, Jay, uh, what you've been experiencing are called partial awake seizures. He said, you have a brain tumor. The only hope is surgery. Uh, two surgeries in, 30 doses of radiation, and in the middle of chemotherapy. I have no time to lose, and so I need to get moving right now. In 1989, I was uh, watching TV and on comes this broadcast of Iron Man. I'd never heard of it before. I was like, huh, what's this? And as I started to understand what I was watching, that these athletes were racing for 140.6 miles, that blew my mind. As a 10-year-old, it never entered my mind, hey, I wonder if I could do that. Until fast forward years later, when my daughter was born, all of a sudden, into my mind pops that memory of being a 10 year old boy watching Iron Man in 1989 and thinking, I want my daughter to think differently. I want her to be in an environment where she feels like she could do anything, that, that she allows dreams to come in her heart and then she goes after them. I couldn't think of anything better than Iron Man to, uh, to put that on display as a teaching tool for my daughter. Even though I'm going through treatment actively, uh, I'm still recovering from surgery, from radiation, I'm in the middle of chemotherapy, this just gives me a chance to show her that yeah, when you go after your dreams, there's gonna be obstacles in your way. You're gonna get knocked down, but you gotta, you gotta find hope, you gotta grab onto that hope, get up, and keep moving forward. My daughter knows that I've set out to do this, and I, I don't want her to see me give up. I've been watching him push his body to the limit and, uh, and then just knowing that the medicine's pushing his body to the limit as well has been. It's definitely been a concern. Um, I think that's my job to be the worrier, <laughs> you know. But we've definitely, uh, even during radiation, we talked to his, uh, to his doctors and, and, you know, the caregivers that he was working with. Um, and a lot of times they would, they would be so impressed and then they would speak to the, um, the benefits of physical exercise for the healing process. So, um, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm worried. <laughs> 2019, I started training for Ironman and I signed up for Ironman Port Macquarie in Australia. The race got postponed. Ironman Santa Rosa was scheduled for um, July 25th, 2020. And so I switched my registration over to that. Let go of the dream of going to Australia. My daughter loves koalas, and so does my wife. And then we got the, the email that uh, Santa Rosa had been canceled as well. So I thought, man, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just plan my own 140.6 mile race. Ironman VR was saying, hey, we're gonna do we're going to do our, our own VR series where people can do 140.6 over a week, over three days, or all in one day. And so I was like, I'm in for all in one day because I, I want to be a part of something bigger and know that there's other athletes that are pushing through just like I am and putting on their own races. But we're all in it together and um, it makes me feel very connected. And how cool would it be if I ended the race in my front yard. 
so that I cement in my daughter's mind the picture of her dad crossing the finish line right in front of her house. She's five years old, five and a half. She's also very sharp. Um, and I think Jay and I both have made a significant effort to communicate with her about what's going on. Recently, Jay went for a run in the morning and, and she was waiting for him. She wanted him to come home and I said, I, I, think, I think he's nearby. I think he's you know around the block if, if you want to wait for him. And so she went outside and she got a picnic blanket. She set up a whole blanket and she sat out there on the front one waiting until he came back. And uh, he had just decided, we had just decided to do the virtual race at that point, um, like a week prior. And uh, we had just talked about making home the finish line. and. I got really emotional just watching her sit, sit out there on the blanket, you know, just middle of the day, dad running around the block, coming home, and I, 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 I get the sense that this experience um, will, will definitely affect her in such a, a powerful, meaningful, hopeful way that she'll carry with her forever. Even if I don't cross the finish line in under 17 hours, uh, even if my body won't allow that, it's still worth it. It's still worth all this. Now, if I can do it, oh, that would be incredible. If I can just get to the start of it and then give 110%, then we'll see what, what the outcome is. Thinking about having that moment of reunion with my daughter on the other side of the finish line, that's gonna, that's gonna supply me with a lot of hope. If you dream it, if you're willing to count the cost and put in the hard work, anything is possible, even with obstacles like cancer treatment thrown into the mix. It doesn't have to stop you.